what does your research indicate? Can you make a generalization? Kind of beyond, uh, not really responsible for me to do such at this stage, but let me just tell you this, is that the initial data is concerning. But we will have another three weeks to vet it, uh, finalize it, and it will all be presented to you on September 14th. Concerning, what does that mean? That's an attorney in the audience, I think. I'm not sure. <laughs> Just as that. It says a medical doctor is concerning to me that if uh, this plays out, there's definitely things that this community should know about and it needs to be disclosed to. Question? Um, I, I, I'm aware that you have been lobbying Quest for more CBC information for the community for your study. Can you please give us an update on getting that information from Quest and where we are with that? Sure. So the CBC study looked at adults, 18 and above, for 10 years. Again, concerning findings. Children are more susceptible for numerous scientific reasons. So we wanted to go back and look at the children. Quest has penetration, my people tell me, three to five times greater than the one lab we used. So therefore, we tried to get more data. We went to them and I negotiated with them for six months. It was all a go until the question was asked, are you working with the Department of Public Health, of which I stated no, they're not to be trusted. Two weeks later, I was shut down. Today, I've gone back to Primex to try and look at the children and I've been shut down. So the question is, I don't know what's going on behind closed doors. Is there some form of regulatory agency that's communication? that is telling these people not to turn over this data. As a, uh, as a doctor, uh, how do you, on a personal level, feel are you being shunned and ignored for your findings? Yes. Um, the issue is, though, is that we have enough data right now to actually, if it comes to fruition and passes the scientific test, we can make conclusions that we'll bring back to you that will let you know uh, what is basically going on with the bone marrow of the community. So in the beginning of the blowout, the health department and SoCal Gas repeatedly said they don't expect any kind of long-term health effects from this gas blowout. All your research, did you find any basis in fact for those statements? Absolutely not. And also, I think they were misguided in just listing the two toxins <clears throat> of uh, the mercaptans and methane. Uh, there are numerous toxins, crude oil being one. And when you read about crude oil, you're not going to like it. Um, there was evidence that shows that the crude oil was known about as early as December 2015. The community was showered down upon, uh, and everybody is at the station right now kind of finger pointing. Uh, so that will all be exposed in the report. Has Governor Newsom's office responded specifically to the data you've collected so far? <coughs> no one has. Zero. But we'll get it out there and see what happens after they're made aware. Doctor, will you paraphrase the questions because we can't hear. All right, thank you. One more question. Um, so CD12 initiated a, a hearing amongst the City Health Council, um, and they held a hearing to address your findings. This, was, this, this took place in Los, downtown Los Angeles, yet uh, they didn't, didn't follow up on that. Can you tell us anything that you know about that? Well, at probably the 11th hour, I found out that I was brought up on their agenda without ever consulting me to come and give a report. But what they had done, they had reflected the Department of Public Health to come and give the report on my study. So when I actually showed up at their meeting, basically no questions were asked of what I was doing. So the health department on the three-year anniversary, I believe, 2018, posted on their website quietly something to the effect that they cannot say that facility is safe, and there's health issues that cannot be explained by just Merck captains, including nosebleeds. Have, have they 
you know if they publicize that anywhere besides just a obscure post on their website? If they made that information, to put that out to the public? The only document that I'm aware of is October 23rd, and that was 2018, I believe. That's uh, the one I'm talking about. Okay. That was the only document that I'm aware of. And it, they didn't publicize that. They just put it on their website somewhere. Right. There's been no address to, to you being exposed to this crude oil. Particulate matter is another major issue. And I would highly recommend, there was a study that just came out by UCLA Environmental Health from Diane Gonzalez. We posted on Facebook. And she is spot on with her conclusion. She has gotten no inquiry whatsoever in regards to her study. Why? Well, conclusions are basically just logical, is that A, it's not safe, and the reason it's not safe is because it's a polytoxin exposure, there's no literature whatsoever, there is fugitive admissions that are going on today, actually there's fugitive admissions that are documented in the wind study that was sequestered for two years. So that was a time that the field was not charged, there was no instructions, no injection, <clears throat> and bottom line, at that time they found methane levels that were elevated and there was no association between benzene and methane. So why look at methane? Dr. Nadella, uh, we're coming up upon the fourth year anniversary of the polytoxin blowout and has, uh, to your knowledge, has the city or the county prepared the uh, practitioners, health practitioners, or our ERs for the next disaster? There is nothing that I'm aware about that is a setup for if it happened tomorrow, would we be any better off? Nothing is in place. So Dr. Rangan's letter told healthcare people to not do any toxicology testing. And then about a year and a half later at the AQMD, um, the launch of their so-called health study, he stated it's too late to do any toxicology testing. So now that same health department is doing their health study four years later. Is it a little late for all that? Well, that's a great Can question. Can find anything? Yeah, absolutely. The literature is actually full of studies that show that the end organs that are affected are your bone marrow. Now that's just addressing benzene. This is a polytoxin exposure. What about the crude oil and everything it, it holds? What about the heavy metals? What about particulate matter? Particulate matter you're gonna find is a very big health concern. Respiratory tracts, people who have COPD, emphysema, children with asthma, all kinds of studies that support this. Why they haven't been looked at before is beyond me. It's very perplexing. Uh, I'm just curious. Um, is the water safe to drink at all or not? Well, that's a whole different <laughs> oh, sorry. bag of worms with the Department of uh, Water and Power, but we did look at the lithium, and we would like to test more with that. Damage. I'm sorry? Neurological damage. Well, the lithium is the issue with the water that I have found. I don't know about any other, but uh, it definitely affects the, uh, the neurological system, yes.